What's up everybody, d man back. Welcome to a brand new video. Today we're gonna be doing my review for The Predator. So I've actually already recorded my review for this movie, but then I realized like that doesn't really work because the way I recorded it, I had the intention of using a whole bunch of footage like I had been using, but that's not gonna work. So we're gonna re-record it. Happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, let's let's talk about The Predator. Please, we can kill it. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains. I will hunt you down wherever you're hiding, and I will eliminate you. I am, I am justice. Death has come to your little town, Sheriff. You can either ignore it, or you can help me to stop it. So this is a pretty new movie, and I'll give you a spoiler warning here because I'm I'm gonna be talking about spoilers. I'm gonna be jumping through the plot, not totally in depth. Uh, I'll just go off what I could remember when I was taking notes. We'll go through the movie as much as I can. We'll just talk about it, and yeah, no no restraint on spoilers. So the movie starts out. There's the fugitive predator. That's what he's known as. He's in a spaceship. He takes off, jumps through a wormhole to Earth. He's being chased by another predator in another ship. He crash lands next to a team being led by the bad guy from Logan. This guy's name is McKenna. Predator shows up attacks everyone the predator loses one of his gauntlets in his mask because McKenna grabs it and then gets away with it there's a little scuffle here it's, it's all right an anti-predator task force shows up and catches the predator real quick meaning McKenna can get away although he doesn't get very far because he's immediately sent to jail but only after he mails himself the gauntlet and the mask he also has this invisa bead that he swallows the predator is studied by olivia munn over at the predator workhouse or, or doctor's office i don't know it's a scientist place he wakes up he kills everybody only after we get one of our predator tropes crossed off here as he's called a beautiful a mofo after uh, his his famous insult from the first movie and the second movie and it was in the third one whatever it's been in all of them you know you know, you've watched my reviews for those movies. This escape sequence is pretty awesome. It's by far the best sequence of the movie. Predator just tears people up. He doesn't even need his equipment to do it. I really like this. The practical effects in here look amazing. It's all done practically from what you can tell. You know, I'm sure there's some CGI in here, but the Predator, for the most part, he's real. He's a real guy in makeup. Looks great. During all this, the Looney Crew, which is where McKenna's been sent to, spots the Predator, and then they decide from this point on they're going to try and kill it. Olivia Munn joins the crew after a series of unfortunate events, and then they all head off to McKenna's house because they realize the Predator must be looking for his gear. On the way, we have some great character interactions, especially at a motel that they stop off at. And I don't know why they feel that they have the time to do that, but apparently they're like, yeah, whatever, Predator's gonna go head home to where my wife and kids are. It's all right, we can stay the night at this motel. But, you know, it's, it's some fun scenes here where we learn a lot about the characters. Pretty good. Things escalate as they make it home and realize that the Predator gear is no longer there because McKenna's son, who we'll just call Young Sheldon for the purposes of this review, stole the Preddy gear and is now trick-or-treating in it. So it's a perfect Halloween movie for a Halloween review. And this kid, while trick-or-treating, murders someone straight up using the Predator mask. It's an accident, but he still he still kills the guy unremorsefully. I hate that. I just can't stand things like that in this movie. And there's a lot of them. The crew of loons save Young Sheldon just in time for some horribly designed pretty dogs to show up and start harassing the kid. One of the dogs gets brain damage, which enables it to have the same superpower as Jack Driscoll from the last movie, which is plot convenience. Now this dog will just show up randomly to progress the plot. Hooray. It's a good guy now. After the scuffle with the pretty dogs in a baseball field, the Predator shows up and chases everyone into a school. McKenna tries to reason with him, trying to give him his equipment back, and then the Predator is like, yeah, well, this... We'll, we'll see. He starts to think about it. He's like, we'll see if I'm going to spare your lives. Doesn't matter, though. A super predator called the hybrid predator shows up on Earth, just grabs the predator through the wall and slams him around like a rag doll before killing him by smashing his face in. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool kill. Really shows off how aggressive and mean this new Predator is. The new hybrid Predator, his design looks real dumb though. He's got like really overly long legs that kind of look like animal legs. And I don't know. I just don't like him. I think the original Predator looks cooler. But hey, if you like this hybrid Predator, good for you. Hybrid Predator is like, well, I need a piece of the gauntlet, which is missing. A piece of the wrist gauntlet somewhere around here. I don't know where it is. I guess I'll go to where the mask is and find it. I don't know why he does, but the hybrid predator goes back to McKenna's house. The mask wasn't there. 
it was on the middle of the street or something like that but he goes back to mckenna's house and he's like uh, well we'll tear it tear it up here it's actually a pretty cool scene when the hybrid predator just drops through the roof and starts killing everybody but it's unnecessary and doesn't actually make sense for why the predator would be there meanwhile our main gang of characters for the movie is kidnapped by the group of bad guys the human bad guys in the movie they take young sheldon and they take him off to the predator spaceship the one that crashed at the beginning of the movie because young sheldon can read the predator's language and he knows exactly where the spaceship is yuck the rest of the gang is all interrogated, but they escape one by one in a pretty fun, cool sequence that I rather enjoy. Eventually, they all get to the chopper and fly out to the spaceship. When they make it to the spaceship, the hybrid predator shows up and starts causing havoc, killing people on both sides of the fight. The best kill in the movie comes in this scene, which is not a single kill, it's like a quad or like maybe even five kills, when the predator fires out this rope from his wrist gauntlet that attaches to the other side of this it's like a, a big open field and there's a car driving through it with all these military guys on it and it decapitates them all simultaneously. It's awesome. In fact, the, the hybrid predator in this scene and for the rest of the movie for the most part is pretty cool. Hybrid predator blows up the spaceship but only after he uses this goofy computer voice to speak to the humans and he's like, I wanna play a game. And he sends them off all running and he's like, well, I'm gonna hunt you down one by one. I'll give you a head start. Real dumb. Don't like it. Everyone's killed in rapid succession. We narrow it down to like three guys. Young Sheldon's kidnapped and thrown onto the Predator's spaceship because, and this is a real plot point, the Predator needs to give his species autism due to the fact that autism is, and I quote, the next step in human evolution. There's so many problems with that. First of all, we learn earlier in the movie that the Predator's they hybridize themselves by taking DNA from spinal fluid, injecting themselves with the best parts of that species DNA so that they can inherit the best traits. That's how you get your hybrid predators. Now the issue with that is, why did the predator kidnap young Sheldon? Shouldn't he have just torn the kid's spine out? That would make sense for him to do, and that's what the predators in the previous movies have done. That's a predator trope, right? But no, he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kidnap this kid. He's a true warrior, or something stupid like that. It's, it's dumb. He, he literally calls the kid a true warrior, or something like that. Second of all, no, it does not make sense for the predator to be like, oh, you know what my species needs? To have an overwhelming fear of loud sounds. My species really needs that. My species really needs to not be able to interact with one another on a normal level. And I'm not trying to bash people with autism. I'm just saying, if you're going to go down this route in a movie, you should probably maybe explain it a little better and maybe don't set up your autistic kid in the movie as someone who has these big problems. He can't deal with loud sounds unless the plot needs him to, and he can't deal with people unless the plot needs him to. So if he's presented one way and we're expecting that the predator is going to inherit the same traits, it seems like the predator is going to be disadvantaging himself. And also, so the kid doesn't have any powers that the predator doesn't. The kid is just as smart as anyone else. He just can read the predator's language. And the predator doesn't need that because the predator can read his own language. Dumb. I don't like this plot point. I think it's horrible. All right, but everyone else dies. The whole gang's dead pretty much. The spaceship that the predator's taken off on, it crashes due to human intervention from Olivia Munn and a couple others. McKenna and Munn defeat the Predator by cutting off his arms and legs using some force fields from, from the Predator's ship. And then the very much bulletproof hybrid Predator who we have seen tank way too much in this movie. Like, he is he is getting shot with Predator blasters and he's doing fine. He dies by a pistol shot to the head in the dumbest line of the movie, which is when McKenna decides that he wants to repeat Arnie's phrase at the end of the first Predator by going, What the hell are you? instead of killing the Predator. Well, the Predator tries to answer him in the original movie, Arnie puts down the rock and is like, what the hell are you? And the Predator's like, hey, listen, I'm gonna blow myself up now. In this one, the Predator literally starts to answer him and McKenna just shoots him in the head, shut up, or whatever he says. It's so dumb, why Why, why ask him if you're just gonna shoot him when he, when he tries to answer? I don't like it, I don't like McKenna all that much, he's kind of annoying. The characters all pay tribute to their fallen brethren and the day is saved. You'd think the movie's over, but it isn't, sadly. It turns out the jungle hunter Predator from the beginning of the movie, the, the fugitive Predator, is actually a good guy. You know, despite slaughtering everyone in that science facility, and killing countless people along his journey. He's a good guy and he really likes humans, so he gives humans a care package. A human-shaped care package, might I add. You'd think that either Arnie would come out of it and it'd be like, oh man, the Predators must have got Dutch at some point and this Predator just trained Dutch to be the most badass he could be 
Or you'd think, oh, you know what? They're returning Adrian Brody home. Now we're going to get to meet Jack Driscoll again. It'll be awesome. That would have been awesome. I would have loved either one of those two. That is not what happens. Instead, this thing flies out of this human-shaped sarcophagus. It's, it's a little gauntlet flies out, and it attaches itself to a scientist and turns the scientist into Robo Predator or Iron Predator. You know, you can make up your own name. Is it is it your bleeding edge Iron Man armor, but Predator style, or is it like Robocop, but Predators? It's more Iron Man than Predator. Either way, you decide. Tell me, what do you pick down below? Oh, but it's great, because now the humans have some sort of super hybrid weapon to defend themselves with, and it can attach to anyone. The movie ends with McKenna being like, I found my new suit. And then it's over. Credits roll. Hooray. The big problem with that is, humans have never needed something special to defeat the Predator before. Arnie did it with a log. Super Cop did it with a Predator smart disk. You have the guy in Predators do it with the things at his disposal. You have, in this movie, they defeat the Predator using the Predator's tech that they get from the Predator. So it's, it's like they don't need this Iron Man armor to defeat Predators. It, it makes the sequel uninteresting. If there is a sequel, now they're just going to one-shot Predators. That's so stupid. Why would you need that? We haven't needed it up to this point. Why do we need it going forward? I don't know, guys. Here's the verdict. The Predator is an all right movie. It's got lots of great fan service in it to the original movies. There's even a shank scene in here. You, you check off pretty much all of your Predator tropes. You got a whole bunch of the one-liners returning. You've got, like I said, your Preddy shank. You've got the music coming back. And there's a whole bunch more Easter eggs to the previous movies. The characters in this movie, they're, they're really the best part. Most of them are pretty likable. They're very funny. It's kind of off-putting in a Predator movie that all of a sudden you have Marvel Cinematic Universe type humor showing up. Marvel characters essentially in a Predator movie when the Predator movies have never had characters like that before. Usually the characters when they crack jokes they're doing it in a human way. Now they're doing it in a very precise way and it's not as clean. It doesn't feel as natural. The Predator looks great. He's pretty cool in this movie. The hybrid Predator though, his design is all right. He is pretty cool the way he, he kills a whole bunch of people but the thing that really draws him back is the special effects. They look real bad. When I say that I mean the special effects themselves. The practical effects look good it's the visual effects that are just trash and the cgi on this big huge hybrid predator it's real bad the soundtrack in this movie though it's just all right i think it was done by henry jackman who did kong school island it's okay it's not great it, it sounds a lot like the sylvester soundtracks from the original although it's a little more cliche than those i know this review kind of seemed more negative than positive but I, I think this movie has more good than bad it's easier to talk about what's bad in this movie than it is to talk about what works in this movie overall I give The Predator an 8 out of 10. If you really want to hear me justify that decision even more, I have a four hour long podcast link down below in which we cover the entire Predator franchise, one movie at a time. We spend quite a while on The Predator. It's on my brother's channel, the Extremely Low Budget Podcast. Check it out. I have a link down below. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time. D-Man, out.